Yo, what's going on, guys? So I know I know I'm a little late on this, but I did want to do a an NBA playoff bracket, and I think that it's going to be pretty accurate. Um, I know some teams have already played their first game, but I don't think that the first round is going to be very competitive in general. I am filming this on the 18th, so as of right now, the Lakers have not played their first game. Houston has not played their first game. Uh, a lot of the big teams haven't played. I know Clippers and Dallas have played, but we kind of know who's going to win there. Um, so, I guess I'll start in the East, and I'll kind of go West. So, first off, Milwaukee, Orlando. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a sweep. I don't really see Orlando doing anything. I like Aaron Gordon a lot, but my man's isn't going to do anything. He's kind of a better dunker than he is basketball player at this point. So... Uh, Milwaukee into the semifinals easily, 4-0. Now with the Pacers, Miami, that's going to be a fun series, although I don't expect either of them to really do anything in the finals, so I'm not really keen to watch it. But I think Jimmy Butler will kind of do more in the playoffs than anybody else. Uh, Oladipo is kind of recovering from an injury, so... And he's young, so I, don't, I really don't know about the Pacers. I'm going to say Miami in 6, at the most Miami in 7. Um, and they'll go on to face the Bucks. Then we have Boston and Philadelphia. Uh, so as of this time, sorry about that, Ho's calling. As of right now, Boston is up a game, and Gordon Hayward is out for four weeks. That just got released today, and Ben Simmons isn't playing. So even with the Gordon Hayward injury, I think Boston's still going to take it, but I do think it'll be Boston in six or Boston in seven. I really think Philadelphia is just kind of missing a lot without Ben. And even if they had him, I think uh, Boston's just stacked right now. They have, like, everybody. They just have a really good set of guys. They're all very they're all very well-rounded. They can play D, they can score, they can shoot, they can dribble, they can do literally anything. So they just have a bunch of weapons, and I don't think Philadelphia is uh, as deep as they are. So Toronto and Brooklyn. Uh, Toronto has played Brooklyn already, and they kind of smashed them. I don't know if Dinwiddie's injured, but uh, I don't think he's been playing recently. I know Levert's been kind of hooping, but from the first game, Toronto just kind of made sure that he didn't score. They were always triple-teaming Levert and just making sure that he never got a good shot. That's kind of their entire offense now. So I think Toronto in four, Toronto in five. I don't think it'll be that crazy. And before I do the whole Eastern bracket, I think I'll go to the West and do the first round over there. So Lakers, Portland. Uh, this one's funny. Uh, <laughs> a lot of Portland fans are saying, like, Portland and seven, Portland and six. Uh, we can stop kind of memeing. It's easily Lakers and five, Lakers and six. Maybe if Damien goes off, CJ goes off. At the very, very most, very low percentage, I think Portland squeezes it to seven, um, just because Anthony Davis kind of has confidence issues sometimes, and he might not hoop the way he should. Even in the bubble, he had a few games where he didn't score very much, like four points or something. So I don't really see CJ doing that, Damien doing that, even Nurkic. He's been very solid. But I do think Lakers are going to win, uh, simply just because they have a deep-ass team and LeBron. So, But Portland's very up in the air and random. So, like I said, either 5, 6, or 7. But either way, it's going Lakers. Now, Houston and OKC. That one's, honestly, I really want to watch uh, the Houston series. Russell's out for a little bit. And, <coughs> and Chris Paul got traded. So, they literally have the exact same record. They have history between them. I think it'll be really interesting. Although, I will say Houston in 6. OKC's really good, actually, and Houston doesn't really play defense, so I think they will steal a game, maybe two, just because Chris Paul is just a good leader. So Denver and Utah, uh, they have played their first game, and even with that being said, I would have still went Denver because they just have older guys, they have a more well-rounded team. They have Paul Millsap, they have Jokic, they have Jamal Murray, they have just a bunch of guys who have been in the league for a while, whereas in Utah, their best player is a young dude in uh, Donovan Mitchell. And even though he's hooping and everything, he's not the problem they're losing by any means. But I just think, like, they're just a more... I just think, like, Denver is a more mature team. So they'll probably win in, I'll say, six or seven. It's definitely going to be close, but I will give the edge to Denver. Now, the Clippers in Dallas, uh, a lot of these are not really going to be schmacks. Uh, the only real sweep I'm seeing is the Bucks. But the Clippers have a great team. Super deep, super scrappy. But I really like Luka, and I really like what he's doing with the Mavericks. So I will give the Mavericks like one or two games, probably more likely one. But I think Luka is just really, really solid. Um, he's probably like the best young player I've seen in a very long time. He, if he would have won MVP this year, he'd have stole it from Derek. So <laughs> he's he's kind of balling, and he's not pulling to Carl Anthony Towns. He's not 
you know, doing nothing in the playoffs. He's definitely performing. So I'll give him a game or two. Clippers in six. Okay, then we have Milwaukee and the Heat. Uh, um, I'm going to say Milwaukee in six. I think Jimmy Butler is going to cause some problems. I feel like Giannis kind of has a temper if he get into his head. If you body him up a little bit, he will get kind of shook. Honestly, you know what? Miami could squeeze it to seven, but I think it would be kind of silly if the, uh, the Bucks didn't go through. So I think Bucks six, Bucks seven. I think uh, Miami's going to give them some problems. And then we have Boston and Toronto. That's honestly that's really interesting. Boston has a way better like group offensive team, but Toronto has a way better group defensive team. Uh, they're way scrappier. So that'll definitely be really interesting to watch. And I'm low-key going to give it to Toronto. They have a bunch of veteran guys. They have a bunch of scrappy guys. I think I think defense wins in the end. And to be honest, I've never really been a big fan of Kimball Walker. I feel like he shoots a very low percentage. I mean, isn't he shooting like 44% on his career or whatever? Like, he just takes a lot of shots. I don't really know him to play that much defense. And if he's like one of their best players going into it, then I don't, you know, leave it to Jalen Brown to get through that Toronto defense. So I think Toronto in six, Toronto in seven. Uh, but I think definitely Toronto. And in the Western Conference semis, we have the Lakers and Houston. So, uh, this is another series I definitely want to watch. I think that the Lakers are definitely going to win, but Houston is... I mean, if they get Russell back, it'll be interesting, but I think the Lakers are just way more consistent. Houston just completely lacks consistency. Either they hit everything or they miss everything. And it also kind of depends on whether Harden's getting his calls or not. Sometimes in the playoffs, some refs kind of just let him play. So these little, like, knit-knack fouls that he'll get all the time, they won't really call. So I'm going to go Lakers in... Lakers in six, Lakers in seven. A lot of these are going to be competitive, but there's obviously, like, a person who's going to pull it out. And below them, we have Denver and the Clippers. So I think Denver's a good team, but they're not the Clippers. So I think, uh, I'll, I'll put the Clippers in six. Um, I don't really give Denver any, any more than that. Clippers have so many scrappy guys. They play defense similar to Toronto, except they have Paul George and they have Kawhi. So... You know, you add, like, Lou Will on the bench and Montrezl Harrell and these guys who not only play defense but know how to score. I think Jokic isn't really going to be able to get these open shots that he usually gets from these pick and pops and that, and whatever. I think they'll just switch everything. So I think Clippers in six easily. And then we'll move back to the Eastern Conference in the Conference Finals. Toronto and Milwaukee. And this is kind of a similar situation. Uh, if Miami's going to give them trouble with their defense and just, like, being scrappy in general, then Toronto's definitely going to. So I think... It can go a lot of different ways. I think it will go, like, if it goes five games, then it's just, like, I think if it goes five games, then maybe Giannis is just too much and they're overhelping on him and their shooter's open and whatnot. Or it could easily go six or seven, and it just is a situation where they're doing kind of what Kawhi did to them last year, where every time Giannis drives, if you watch him play, man, he picks up the ball after his first step. And after that, you know, he'll take two long strides, and then if everybody collapses on in on him, then he kind of has to make a split decision of where he's going to pass it to, and that's where he uh, he actually struggles a lot. So if he was a better passer, if he had better vision, I think he's totally really, 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 really hard to beat. But I, honestly, you could just trap him whenever he drives, and it's really not a big deal. So I think Toronto low-key could bring it to seven, maybe even win. Uh, that's why I don't think Milwaukee will win the finals, but we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. But yeah, Toronto's going to give him some trouble. It'll be a really scrappy series, but Milwaukee will win. I believe, in six or seven. And the Western Conference Finals, Clippers, Lakers. Oh, this is the matchup. This is the entire reason I didn't want the season to get canceled, just so I could watch this matchup. And uh, some people are going to hate me, but I, I got to say, man, I, I really like the Clippers. I, I think Clippers in seven. I really do. A lot of LeBron fans don't like to admit it, but LeBron's getting older, and I think with a young, prime Kawhi Leonard defending him all the time, and then if you get a switch, and then it's Paul George, and if you get a switch, it's Patrick Beverly, and it's just constant pressure, you know? And I think some of the non-veteran like veteran players on the Lakers are going to struggle. Like I think Kuzma is totally going to struggle in the series. And as far as Anthony Davis goes, like I said, he does have confidence issues. With that being said, he's still going to drop 40, 40 and 20, at least once in the series. But I think, you know, Montrezl Harrell, I'm not saying he's going to lock him up by any chance, but like he's one of those players who will gladly get dunked on. You know what I mean? He's always going to contest every single shot you do at the paint. So with that constantly on you, and with, you know, Anthony Davis, like, having these little tiny injuries he gets. He gets, he's like the god of the minor injury. He gets them, like, every other game. So, I just think that the pure defense of the Clippers is just better than the Lakers. And Kawhi is, like, he's just, like, a really good all-around player. 
he really has no weaknesses to his game, and I think he fits within any system, whereas LeBron, um, a lot of people don't know this, LeBron's never been a part of a team that is the top 10 in the league in assists, although LeBron gets a lot of assists. And the reason behind that is because it's usually just LeBron bringing the ball up, running these high pick and rolls, LeBron in an ISO situation in the post, and him reading the defense himself, and then these guys that haven't touched the ball in five minutes, they're kind of forced to shoot a shot when they haven't, you know, they're not in the rhythm of the game. That's why these guys like George Hill uh, don't really perform uh, on his team, and then they go to another team, and then they perform well, and then LeBron fans don't really understand why. Uh, there's a rhythm to basketball. That's why, you know, the Rockets struggle. If Harden's dribbling all the time, then, you know, the reason why Trevor Reza went 0 for 10 on those shots because Trevor Reza wasn't touching the ball. You know, if you get it every now and then when you've been running around the court for 15 minutes and you finally get it to shoot, you're not warmed up, you're not ready, you're not going to make that shot. So I just think from the Clippers' offensive standpoint, everybody touching the ball, uh, a lot of people getting into the flow of the game, along with the fact that they have a leader. You know, it's not a situation where it's like the old Atlanta Hawks where they just have a really solid team, basketball team, but they have no leader. Clippers definitely have a leader, and they have two guys that can completely make any game winner situation you need. And the same thing goes for the Lakers. I mean, I'm not saying it's the Clippers by far. I just think it's very tiny, like maybe like 56% leaning Clippers. I'd rather see the Clippers win. I don't hate LeBron, but, I, I you know, I think the legacy of Kawhi would just be through the roof if he manages to pull it off. So, with that being said, uh, if you haven't already clicked off this video, the Clippers and Milwaukee, I think Clippers in six, easy, no cap. I think the finals will basically be, I think the finals will basically be the Lakers and the Clippers. I'm not really worried about Milwaukee. Like I said, you just trap Giannis, uh, and then you deal with, like, Middleton. Like, you know, it's not really a big deal. Uh, Brooke Lopez is going to make some shots, but, like, at the end of the day, it's not a really big deal. Uh, Clippers. Clippers. My, my boys, Clippers. Uh, so you guys can quote me on this if they get swept or something, but I, I don't see that happening. They're, they're too, um, defensive teams are usually more consistent. So I f feel like the Lakers can have an off night with their role players for sure before like the Clippers ever would. So that's my, that's my bracket. That's what I'm going with. I'm sticking to it. And uh, if you guys disagree, you have other reasonings for things, let me know. Uh, this is actually like one of the most like fun videos I've done. Uh, I really like sharing my opinion with this and seeing what you guys think. So if you like the video, like it. Subscribe for more. Uh, I'm going to try to be cranking out stuff. All right, get out of here.